The big idea is that inflammation in the body can lead to changes in how we think, feel and behave. My tooth hurts. I go to the dentist. In removing the infected tooth, he inevitably exacerbates the inflammation of my gums. Later, I feel depressed and low. When I first started working as a doctor, I met a patient, Mrs. P, who had severe rheumatoid arthritis. The joints in her hands were chronically inflamed, but what she emphasized to me was that she felt chronically depressed. It got me thinking, was there a link between physical inflammation in the body and the mental symptoms of depression? Let's explore this idea via the chain of cause and effect. Firstly, a physical insult such as a knife wound to the hand causes an inflammatory response. This is a protective reaction by the immune system. The triumph of modern immunology is that we can explain how trauma or infection causes inflammation in great detail. But immunology has not had so much to say about how inflammation can have effects on human behavior. The traditional thinking goes like this. I felt low after my visit to the dentist because going there reminded me I'm getting older and ever closer to the grave. I became depressed because I thought about being inflamed. The alternative view is simpler. I was briefly depressed after the dentist. Mrs. P was more seriously depressed by her arthritis, not only because we were thinking about our physical health, but because the inflammatory proteins and cells in our bodies directly changed the way our brains were working, which in turn changed our thoughts and behaviors. So why is this new idea emerging now? In 20th century teaching, the brain and the immune system had nothing to do with each other. The brain was thought to be immune privileged, meaning that nothing from the immune system could get through the blood-brain barrier that protected the brain and the mind from inflammation in the body. This is a concrete example of the dualist way of thinking, originally proposed by Descartes, which divides each human being into two very different and separate things, the body and the mind. But we now know that inflammatory proteins in the blood can get through the blood-brain barrier. These are called cytokines, and they are part of the immune system's response to threat. Let's take a look at the process of inflammatory response in more detail. We have two things in the diagram here, a macrophage and a cytokine. A cytokine is a protein that communicates inflammatory signals throughout the body. A macrophage is like a foot soldier that guards a particular patch of cells in the body from invasions by when bacteria invades its neighborhood, the macrophage is genetically programmed to attack them on site. It also pumps out cytokines into the bloodstream, which mobilize other macrophages in the body to go and help. As a result, the original macrophage is backed up by others and the bacterial enemy is defeated. But there is often a dark side to inflammation and immunity. The immune system can damage the body or the self, as well as killing invasive germs, the non-self. So we have good reason to believe that inflammation in the brain and the body can directly cause depression. That is not to say that everyone who is depressed is inflamed or that everyone who is inflamed will be depressed. But we know about 25% of arthritis patients are depressed and about a third of patients with major depression are inflamed. Maybe we could treat depressive symptoms in these people using anti-inflammatory drugs. There is already some anecdotal evidence that some of the new anti-inflammatory drugs, like Remicade, can make arthritis patients feel better. They call it the Remicade high. How does this happen? Anti-inflammatory drugs will often reduce the levels of cytokines in circulation, and so they may be able to stop inflammation in the body from being communicated to the brain, and so block the adverse effects of inflammation on mood and behavior. And it's not just drugs that can have anti-inflammatory effects. There is some evidence that the mind can be trained to control inflammatory responses in the body. This may be one reason why psychological treatments like mindfulness training or meditation can be effective for stress management or depression. It's time to get moving. There is enough evidence to suggest that the immune system plays a part in depression, Alzheimer's disease, schizophrenia, and other disorders of the mind. We need to test new ideas for anti-inflammatory treatment. 
This could revolutionise the options available for patients. Change always takes time to come to medicine, but the recent discoveries of how and why the immune system links the body, the brain and the mind could help us move forward to a more integrated way of dealing with depression in future.